Hello everybody, my name is Sheila SL Reads, and today I'm going to be talking about my favorite reads of the year. Sorry that this video is going up kind of late. I had finals this week, which I did very well on, if anybody was wondering, but I just didn't have time to film, and I also forgot my camera at home, so when I went back to school with all the books, I was like, well crap, I can't even film this, and I didn't even have makeup. So all around, it was just a mess. But now I'm wearing makeup, I'm wearing this fun, festive New Year's shirt, even though it's still December, but we're just gonna go with it. So if you watched my last video, you saw that there are a few books that disappointed me this year. I read some mediocre books, but I did read quite a few amazing books. So I had to narrow down this list just to five books slash series that I read this year that I really adored, and I'm just gonna get right into it. As in the last video, these are in no particular order. These are just books that I really liked this year, so it's not like I'm saying this is the best one and this is the worst of the best. Number five. I don't know. The first book that I'm going to be talking about is actually two books because I read the first two books of the series, but I am counting them as one because they're fucking amazing. So that would be Stalking Jack the Ripper and Hunting Prince Dracula by Carrie Maniscalco. I absolutely adored this series. Shout out to my roommate Olivia for being amazing, not only letting me borrow these books to read and also to film my video with, but also because she just talked me into reading these books. And I seriously would never regret reading these. When Stalking Jack the Ripper first came out, I was a little apprehensive of reading it. I picked it up at Barnes & Noble one day and I read the first page. It starts out on an autopsy, so it just dives straight in with like the style of the book that it is. This book is a little gory, but our main character and just the book in general are both very scientific. Audrey Rose Wadsworth is the main character who is on this cover and the other one. She's a highborn girl living in London at the time of the Whitechapel murders, aka the murders of Jack the Ripper, and so in this book she solves the mystery of Jack the Ripper, which is fantastic if you think about that, because they don't even know who that is in real life. This book definitely goes along with, like, real life. They never say who the person actually is to, like, the whole world. It's just, like, she knows and her partner, Thomas Cresswell, knows. This book has one of the most refreshing YA romances that I've seen in a while. There definitely are those things. There's a little bit of miscommunication and there is the whole social propriety thing, especially in this time period, but they are very well matched for each other and I adore them. In the sequel, Audrey Rose goes to Romania to a forensic school. She is the only woman there and so this one has a lot of showing how she is combating this very male, masculine society. And it is amazing she solves these murders as well. She's just very good. I love the mystery aspect of this. It is definitely a little scary, especially considering it's like Jack the Ripper, who was terrifying, and Prince Dracula, who is less terrifying, but these murders are pretty scary. This book has some like magical elements, and it's just very mysterious. You really do not know who the murderer is throughout the entire thing, and I really like that because I feel like there are some books that you're just like able to predict what's going to happen, and these books were definitely not like that. Carrie Maniscalco, who's the author of this series, just announced the title and the synopsis of the next book in the series, which also just got a fourth book, so it's going to be a quartet instead of the original planned trilogy, and that book is called Escaping from Houdini, and I'm so excited for it. The next favorite read of 2017 is A Crown of Wishes by Roshni Chakshi. This is the companion book to The Star Touch Queen, which I picked up at 2016 BookCon. The thing that originally drew me to that book was that the cover was absolutely beautiful because I was literally just looking at, like, thousands of books, and I was like, oh, I'll pick this one. I'll buy this one and take it home. I really enjoyed this series. It is technically a duology, which is my favorite format, and I follow the author on Instagram and Goodreads and pretty much everywhere, and I love her. This book involves a lot of Indian mythology, which is not something that I know a lot about of, so it was very interesting to have that aspect of the story. It was something that really kept me captivated about this book. We're getting introduced to all these creatures from these different Indian epics and everything, and it was kind of like reading a Rick Riordan book, which is ironic because she's actually writing a book that is supposed to be like the Percy Jackson series, but for Indian mythology under Rick Riordan's new label. While the Star Trek Queen also involved a princess, this involves a different kind of princess. She's the sister of Maya, who is the main character from that book, but she is a warrior. She's a fighter. And this book starts with her as a hostage of an enemy kingdom, and her own kingdom is very corrupt, and this one also has some corruption and just weird things going on. And, and so the protagonist, whose name is Gwari, ends up going on this magical adventure with the prince of the other kingdom named Vikram. They end up going to the Tournament of Wishes, where they meet all fantastic beasts and creatures and people from all over. They compete in this competition in order to get a wish. And I read this book right before I read Caraval, which was on my list of worst reads from 2017, and they both had, like, kind of a similar, uh, like, tournament aspect, and, like, you're just trying to win, and, like, you get, like, I think that one also had a wish that you got at the end, but this one was a lot better. I really enjoyed this. I love Roshni Shakshi's writing style. I've seen people call it, like, purpley prose. That's saying that it is over the top or eloquent for no reason or out of context, but that is what this entire book is like. It is beautiful and fantastic. The next book of my favorite reads of 2017 is Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. This was the first book that I read in 2017, and oh my god, was it fantastic. I love this book. I feel like I'm saying that about all these books, but this one, 
it blew me away. This book is definitely more of an adult fantasy, whereas I am mostly well versed in young adult fantasy, and still not even that much. I don't read a lot of it, but I really enjoy it. This book follows Mia Kaveri, who is an assassin, and so obviously hearing that assassin thing with like a young girl makes me think of Throne of Glass, but these books were completely different. I really did enjoy the Throne of Glass series, even though I'm having some issues with it right now, but like this, oh, I have no issues with it. It is fantastic. It is so well written. It has that gorier aspect to it because it is not a young adult book. It is an adult novel. I have never read anything by J. Kristoff before, but after I read this, I realized that he was one of the co-authors of Illuminae, and so I picked that book up. Have not read that either. They're very different kinds of books, so I don't know if it's going to be that great, but one of my favorite things about this book is its world building. I use this for the storytelling prompt in the Finally Fall book tag, and the reason for that is that this book has lots of footnotes, and that's where it has the majority of its world building, is in these footnotes. They can get up to like half a page, and the amount of footnotes on it just really depends what it's explaining. That means you don't have that awkward world building that you're just kind of throwing in somewhere in the story, and it doesn't really fit all that well, and it's not, it's just like chunky and awkward, and it just doesn't really belong there. That does not happen in this book. So I am sorry because my camera just died. I have not charged it in weeks and for some reason it was not dying and I was like, this is amazing. I don't have to charge this thing. I don't even know where my charger is. And then it died on me in the middle of this video. The next book on this list is The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. I had seen this book at the bookstore a few times before I picked it up, which really talks about the amount of times that I go to the bookstore because this was not out for very long before I bought it. Part of the reason that I bought it was because the main character is bisexual. His name is Monty, and he is definitely the kind of character who just sleeps around with anybody, but turns out he actually has like a heart of gold. He's just really bad at expressing his feelings or his love for anybody, and he's overall just a disaster. So, so Monty is supposed to go on this grand tour, which is something that people used to do in like the 17 and 1800s when you were the son of a rich person like Monty is. You would just go explore the sights of Europe, and Monty tries to do this and it does not go well. That was part of the thing that I really loved about this book. Everything that could go wrong, somehow went wrong. Like, there were pirates, there were highwaymen, he stole something from the Prince of France, and it's just this big adventure, and you find out that there is like a mystery beneath that, and he has to solve it and figure out what he's going to do next, and he is just a very relatable main character because he's not perfect by any means. He's trying so hard, and he just keeps messing up, and I feel like that's something that so many people can be like, that is, that's me. Like, I try so hard and things just don't go the way that I want them to. Monty goes on this adventure with his best friend who he is completely in love with and his sister who is written as an asexual character and the author did not just do that to bait anybody, she said that is something that she's actually interested in doing. There's going to be a sequel to this and I'm so excited it's going to be about his sister and pirates and amazing things. I just thought that this was such a fun book. It had so many layers within it, like you look at it and it's just this adventure on a grand tour but beneath that it has representation and it has representation alongside characters who are dealing with abuse and, and characters who are dealing with racism, homophobia, and general ignorance about everything. There's a character who has epilepsy and people think that he is like cursed by the devil, which is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. If you're interested in a historical adventure with all of that jazz, then you should definitely pick this book up. The final book on my list of best reads of 2017 is the only contemporary on this list, despite the fact that it is bright orange. The last book is When Dipple Met Rishi by Sandai Manan. Could have pronounced her last name wrong, but I tried. So, my least favorite color is orange, and when you take off the book jacket of this, it's just orange. It's just orange everywhere, and it just made me want to die a little, but I got past it because this book is amazing. This book was so funny. Our main characters are Dimple and Rishi, as you can see on the title. They're very interesting to read from the perspective of they have very different goals at the beginning of the book, and you're kind of wondering, how is this going to work out? Dimple wants to go to this coding camp sort of thing where she's going to design an app. The person who wins this competition will get to meet one of Dimple's favorite people in the technology world. I don't really know anything about coding, computer science, that kind of thing. This book takes place at one of those competitions, but there are a lot of things that happen besides that. Like, it deals a lot with cultural identity and what it means to be Indian American nowadays. And Dimple is definitely trying to fight against her roots and Rishi kind of wants to go towards them. And they kind of have to find like a middle ground of where they're comfortable because they end up having to work together in this competition. This book is a lot about having the present and the future living in America and the modern era and everything, but still having those cultural ties and still having all those things 
things that still make you you. One of the messages of this book is that there's no point in doing something and trying so hard if your heart is not completely in it. You have to find the thing that you're willing to fight for and you have to find the thing that you think is important for the world and important for you and you just have to stick with it, even if you have setbacks. And I really did overall enjoy the romance. I was kind of expecting not to, but it grew on me, so that's great. So that is the end of my list of my favorite reads of 2017. Let me know down below what your favorite books were this year, whether they came out this year or you got around to them this year, just let me know. I'm always looking for more recommendations of books. Also, if you read any of these books, I'd love to know your opinions on them. If you liked this, please like it, and if you want to see more videos from me, I will be putting out quite a few videos while I am home for winter break, and feel free to subscribe as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!